So what we're looking at now then are your universal human rights and human rights are said to be the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. So we're going to look at where our human rights um, have originated from and the different types of human rights. So if we look at these pictures then you might be able to recognise what these are pictures from. And yet all of these are pictures from World War II and the Holocaust and where Jewish people and other minorities were placed in concentration camps, completely discriminated against based on their religion, um, their country of origin, their cultural background, um, their um, sexuality and so on and so forth. And where they were placed in concentration camps and forced to work either as slave labour or were killed. So after the horrors of World War II, an international organisation was established that's called the United Nations, the UN, I'm hoping you've heard of them. And it's their job to maintain peace and security and solve humanitarian problems all across the world. In 1948, just a short time after the war finished, they developed basically a code of con conduct, a kind of list of rules for the way that people should be treated all across the world. And this became the Universal Declaration Declaration of Human Rights. So that's the UN um, documentation on human rights that's for every single person in the whole world. Everybody in the world has these human rights. Lots of times these rights are taken away, but everybody's entitled to them. 192 countries signed up to it. So we still get violations of human rights, perhaps where law enforcement are using too much violence. This is a picture of somewhere called Guantanamo Bay, which is a detention camp in, I believe it's Cuba, um, supposedly run by the US and it is for suspected terrorists. However, a lot of the people who were sent to Guantanamo Bay are treated in horrendous ways as you can see from this picture there is evidence that torture happens and there's also a lot of people who don't get fair trials and this is a whole problem with um, imprisonment of people and the criminal justice system this is an example of the death penalty this is actually a man who is going to be stoned to death so what they do this is in um, Saudi Arabia I think or is it Iran I can't remember, but basically they are buried, uh, they're, they're putting these clothes in these cloths, um, buried if you're a man up to your waist, if you're a woman up to your chest, and then the people will get rocks that can be no bigger than the size of their hand, and they will basically throw rocks at you until you die, and they can't be bigger than that, your hand because that might knock you out straight away, and part of it is about torturing you. Obviously, as well, when there are, um, you know, natural disasters that violates people's human rights as well, because they, they can't get sanitation, they can't get education, so on and so forth. OK, so they're set up to protect all people. We've actually put them into our laws in the UK, but a lot of countries don't actually do that. So these are the human rights then that everybody in the world is entitled to. If you press pause, what you can do is you can code each one, the rights that are about protecting people, the rights that are about guaranteeing a, a standard of living across the world and the rights about equality. An example of each one has been done for you. Have a go at doing the rest. Press pause. So what I want you guys to do now is to pick what you think are the three most important rights and say why. Then what I want you to do is have a look at the ones that are to do with the law. Make a key on them if you've got a copy of them or just note them down. Which ones are to do with the law? These are your legal rights. OK, so these are the rights then. Your right to equality, freedom from discrimination, Right to life, liberty, personal security. So right to life means that you don't get murdered. Right to liberty means that you don't have to live as um, imprisoned or as a slave. But obviously that can be taken away from you um, if you do need to go to prison. So some rights are not absolute. That means that they can be taken away from you by the state. 
freedom from slavery, freedom from torture and degrading treatment. Freedom from torture is an absolute right. You are never, ever allowed to be tortured. We know torture happens in some places in the world, um, but you're actually not allowed to do it. Um, you also have the right to recognition as a person before the law and equality before the law. So obviously these are legal ones and right to equality before the law really comes into our role of law and um, rule of law within the UK where um, it doesn't matter if you are the Queen, if you are the Prime Minister or if you're a homeless person on the street. If you break the law, you go through the same process that everybody else does. OK, so you can go through all of those and lots of those are to do with the law. So innocent until proven guilty. And it's got to be innocent until proven guilty by a court of law, not by the media, not by public opinion. So free from interference with privacy, family, home and correspondence. This is why I don't know if anybody's ever told you it's illegal to open somebody else's mail. And that's why the only time people can go against this is if, for example, the police need to investigate you and they might have access to your emails and your computer and so on. Right to free movement in and out of the country. This is one people don't tend to know about. And this is what we're talking about when it comes to people who want to seek asylum and things like that. And there we go. The right to asylum in other countries from persecution. If your life is in danger in your home country, you have got the human right to go and find safety. You can also change your nationality, free to marry and have a family. And obviously, we've only recently legalised gay marriage. So this has been a human right since 1948, but we've denied it to gay people for decades. Right to own your property, have a belief in religion um, and your opinions. Peaceful assembly and association. So you can join pressure groups, you can join unions as long as they're peaceful. Right to participate in government and free elections. If you do not live in a democracy, if you live in a dictatorship, you do not have that human right met. Um, rest and leisure, of course, is um, important. Adequate living standards as well. Um, and we will talk about this more in detail. Right to education, to participate in cultural life and so on and so forth. OK, so if you want to, to help you out with this, you can design a leaflet about the most important rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adding in as much of this as possible. And then we've got a four mark question. So it says human rights abuse. It's a source question. It says in recent years, some governments have taken the following actions. In Zimbabwe, hundreds of human rights defenders and members of the main opposition party, the Movement for Democratic Change, were arrested for participating in peaceful gatherings. In Pakistan, thousands of lawyers, journalists, human rights defenders and political activists were arrested for demanding democracy, the rule of law and an independent judiciary. And in Cuba, political prisoners remain in prison for their non-violently expressed political views or activities. Your question says, question and consider the ways in which those described in Source E are suffering human rights abuse according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So all that you need to do for this, pick two of the three stories, so either the Zimbabwe, Pakistan and Cuba, briefly note down what's happening and then say what human right they are going against. OK, and there's some ideas to put in there too. The next thing you need to know about then are civic duties. So as well as rights, we all have responsibilities. In the UK, we have civic duties, which basically are not written down. They're not laws, but they are duties we are expected to perform in return for the democratic privileges that we've got access to. So, for example, you've got to obey the rule of law. You've got to pay your taxes. You shouldn't hurt other people. You should report crimes to the police. You should, um, as a parent, do things like send your child to school and so on. You should respect, show respect for parliament and government and for the police. Vote and serve on a jury.